In this video, we're going to look at how electrons emit and absorb energy. Now this is a follow-up to your flame test lab. So we're going to start there and we're going to look at why elements produce the colors of light that you saw in that activity. Alright, here we go. Remember in the activity yesterday you saw, for example, that copper produces a green flame while lithium compounds produce that really bright pink reddish colored flame. Different elements do have characteristic colors and it's because of the behavior of their electrons. Now the Bohr model of the atom is the model that you have in your reference tables. So if you'll get that out and look at it, I'll explain these points to you using that diagram. The Bohr model is um, drawn so that elements circle the nucleus of an atom in distinct energy levels called orbits. It's an orbital model or a planetary model just like the planets circle the Sun in the orbits. Now an electron can move from one energy level to another one if it gains or loses a specific amount of energy and that's called a quantum of energy. Now electrons can be found in these different orbits but they can't be found in between them. So it's almost like um, when you're climbing the rungs of a ladder. You can be on one rung or on the one above it or below it, but you can't exist between the rungs of the ladder. With the orbits, the ones that are closest to the nucleus, where n equals 1, are the lowest energy level orbits, and that's called the ground state. The higher the number gets, the further the ring is from the nucleus, the higher energy state that electron would be. So how do these electrons produce these colors? Well, when electrons absorb energy, they take in the energy and they jump to a higher energy level. They absorb a quantum or a photon of energy. And that puts them, for example, from n equals 1 in the ground state to somewhere higher than that in the electron cloud. Well, when, ad and when electrons emit energy, they have to give off the energy to come back to those lower energy states. And you need to know that that's, a, that's how that process works. If an atom loses energy, it falls down to a lower energy state. If an electron gains energy, it moves to a higher energy state. Well, the energy that's given off corresponds to the visible light that we see in the spectrum. The amount of energy absorbed is the same as the amount of energy that it would later release and that energy corresponds to the energy of light and sometimes those energies correspond to visible colors. Now the Bohr model was great because it helped us understand how electrons moved around the nucleus and how the spectrum was created for hydrogen. But the Bohr model fell short when you tried to apply it to any other element and scientists today can't predict spectrum um, based on the calculations and the equations that Bohr used for the hydrogen model. So here's that picture of the Bohr model from your reference table. Let's work a sample problem. On the left side here, it's asking you to look at an electron that's falling from n equals 6 to n equals 2. Now what you're going to do there is find the n equals 6 ring on the model and find the dark arrow that corresponds to the electron falling to n equals 2. Can you find it? It's down here in the bottom right hand corner and it corresponds to a wavelength of 410 nanometers. So that's the answer to the first question. From n equals 6 to n equals 2 is a wavelength of 410 nanometers. Now the second question is what region of the spectrum would that light correspond to? Well, 410 nanometers, if you look on the very bottom of this picture, is the visible spectrum. So 410 nanometers would be part of the visible spectrum. Now let's take a look at that same 410 nanometer um, wavelength of light and figure out what color of light that would be. So in the electromagnetic spectrum, a very small piece of the spectrum is visible light. And if you look down at the very bottom, the wavelengths are given to you in meters. So a quick conversion to nanometers would mean red on the left hand side would correspond to about 700 nanometers and then violet on the right hand side corresponds to about 400 nanometers. 
If our wavelength was 410 nanometers, it would definitely fall into the violet color range. Violet is between 400 and 420 nanometers according to this chart. Now we're going to practice some more of those in class. So hopefully you'll just start to get a feel for how to read the Bohr model and how to look at the electromagnetic spectrum. Now with wavelength and frequency, what you find is that the longer the wavelength, the less often a wave will happen. And that's what frequency is. Wavelength is measured in nanometers and frequency is measured in hertz. So we find that they are inversely related. The shorter with the wavelength, the higher the frequency. The longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency. Take a look at this animation to help you. So here is a FET simulation and if I set it to play, you can see that this little yellow motor here on the left is producing some waves. Now the frequency of this particular wave is 50. What I want to do is ramp it up. Let's let the frequency go up to 80. Alright, as the frequency goes up to 80, I'm just going to pause it. You can see the distance between the crest of this first wave to the crest of this one is about 20 centimeters. So remember that if, if the frequency in this simulation is 80 hertz, then the wavelength is 20 centimeters. Now I'm going to hit play again. This time I'm going to readjust. I'm going to take the frequency down to about 20. See how the wavelength has changed? It's become a really long wavelength. So I'm going to pause it again and you see that we don't even get a full wave on the page. From the crest of this first wave to the crest of the next one, it goes out the window. We can't even see it. It's probably somewhere around 75 or 80 centimeters long. So as the frequency goes down, the wavelength goes up. It gets bigger. Got it? But often, especially when you're dealing with light, it is convenient to talk about electrons as waves too. So we're going to um, think of them in both ways, especially for this unit. Thanks.